there is a certain secret to left-hand violin technique that the pros aren't actually hiding from you, but with how little it's talked about in violin teaching, it almost feels like they are. I'm Tobias Murphy, this is Murphy Music Academy, and today I'm going to reveal that secret to you. Now, of course, would be the time for you to like and subscribe, as well as hitting the bell button, because I haven't made any long-form videos for the past few weeks, but I have been doing quite a few YouTube shorts, which I have been told some of you have not actually seen. So go ahead and hit that bell button so you'll be seeing those, because I will be making those a lot more often than I will the long-form videos. You can also check out my TikTok, yes, I have one now, and my Instagram, though, to be fair, right now I'm really just reposting my YouTube shorts there, but if you want to go ahead and support me over on those platforms, you're welcome to. And lastly, but certainly not least, if you need more personal instruction, which, by the way, you do, then you want to shoot an email to admin at murphymusicacademy.org to set up a trial lesson with one of our highly qualified faculty here at Murphy Music Academy. It's time to take your violin, viola, or piano playing to the next level. Now, as for the secret that is the subject of today's video, it's actually nothing more than a very specific and special way of pressing the string down to the fingerboard that ensures greater accuracy and, of course, very important, looseness. You see, there are actually three different ways to press the strings down while you're playing. One of them is terrible, the second one is a little better but not ideal, and the third one is what I'm going to show you today. Now, before I go any further, I'm sure some of you are wondering, uh, why exactly is this so important? Well, you see, violin is a dynamic art, not a static art. Unlike painting, I can't just get the note exactly right, leave it, come back the next day, and have it be the way I left it. However, what we can do is practice certain technique and motor patterns that increase the likelihood that we will be able to accurately repeat whatever it is we've previously practiced. And this brings us to the subject of today's video, which is what is the most accurate and, most importantly, repeatable action we can take in the left hand. As I mentioned earlier, there are three different ways of accomplishing this. The first and the worst is what most students do when they first start playing, which is doing the exact same motion you would use when making a fist. Beyond the obvious tension problems that come with moving your fingers and pressing down the strings with this sort of action, um, there's also the problem with when you do this, your fingers curl inward. And we want to keep the fingertips right over the tops of the strings, or even sometimes the pads of the fingers right over the tops of the strings. So anything that encourages this type of motion often not only pulls the strings sideways, sometimes you'll see that on some students, but also means that they have a lot less flexibility because of the way the fingers are curving inward. You're not going to be able to get very far in your violin playing if you're moving your fingers to the strings that way. Now, the second option is way, way better than the first. You see, instead of doing this, making the action that comes from a fist, instead what you can do is make the action that comes from this, bringing each finger to the thumb. Now, if I take my thumb, put it on the neck of the violin, and then treat the entire fingerboard as if it's an extension of my thumb, I can execute this exact same motion very easily. What this is going to do is keep my fingers right on top of the strings. I'm going to only be pushing the string straight down instead of pulling on it. It's going to keep my fingers, as you see, from pulling inward, so I have a lot more flexibility. I'm overall going to be able to stay quite loose. It's just overall a much, much better way of going about putting the fingers onto the strings and pressing them down. So if this is so much better, and by the way, I actually made an entire video on just this idea, which you can go watch here. If this is so much better, then why are we searching for a third way? Well, you see, the problem with this is not that it's wrong, but that it's incomplete. You see, this is the perfect way to bring your fingers to the strings. But the problem comes when we actually press the strings down. You see, if we take the same motion with which we bring the finger to the string and then use that same motion to press the string down, what we're going to end up with is a lot of tension in the center of our hand and especially in our thumb. There is never any moment in which tension benefits your violin playing, and in fact, especially here, it's going to be one of the major factors that makes your violin playing less consistent. 
So what is the correct way to do it? Well, instead of squeezing the string down, what you want to do is use leverages. You see, if I take my left hand like this, put my right hand here, and without moving any of these fingers, just go ahead and twist this way, what I'm going to be doing is applying pressure without any squeezing of these muscles onto the fingers of my right hand. And it works the exact same way with your violin. So to demonstrate this a little more clearly, if I was to hold my violin like this, and remember, the leverage point is always going to be the thumb. I've talked about this before in other videos, but it's always gonna be the thumb. So if I start in an extreme position like this, and I rotate, as I was rotating before, this way, and then bring the finger, the second finger, to the A string, and then keep rotating the exact same way, what's going to happen? I'm going to push the string down. I didn't have to pinch the string. I didn't have to squeeze the string. I just kept the same motion, used a tiny bit of leveraging because the string is not that far away from the fingerboard, and boom, the string is now pushed down. Learning to leverage the finger against the thumb to push the string down is going to keep so much tension out of your left hand, which is always going to be a benefit to your playing. So I've explained and demonstrated the concept, but how does this work practically? How do you start to apply this to your own playing? As I mentioned before, this is a great way to bring the fingers to the strings. I know I was doing this as a demonstration, but this is just an exaggeration of the leveraging that happens when you press the string down. Do not bring the finger to the string doing this. This was just an exaggerated example. If I see your wrist moving like this while you're playing and you're not doing some exaggerated vibrato, you're doing something wrong. So once we move the finger to the string like this, then what we want to do is engage the leveraging, which by the way, should be so small again. Look, I've just leveraged it. Do you see that? Here it's not leveraged. Here it's leveraged, right? Should be so small that you don't actually see the motion happening. It should ultimately look like one smooth motion. There's the bringing the finger to the string, touch, and then leverage. And when you first start out doing this, that is what you want to practice. So let's say we're doing a scale. Pick A major for, for instance. I, this is what you want to practice. You want to practice touch, leverage, play. Touch, leverage, play. Touch, leverage, play. And the fourth finger, because it's most important on the fourth finger, touch, leverage, play. Now, this is how you want to start practicing this idea, but there's one more thing to add to this that really makes it the pro secret that I claimed it to be at the beginning of the video. So first we have touch, which is how we bring the finger to the string. Then we have leveraging, which is how we press the string down. And the last part that we need to add to this is balance, which is how we take into account the motion of the arm this way after the finger is placed on the string. The balancing aspect of this is so important because this enables us to use the least amount of pressure necessary to get a good sound. The reason for this is if we have the locus of the fingertip perfectly balanced where there's almost no variation in the pitch, even at a microscopic level, then you actually need far less pressure on the string to get a good sound. Most people press the strings down way harder than is necessary and even though it may not seem like much, that little extra bit of energy that you're wasting actually does make a pretty big difference in your technical abilities. To demonstrate the importance of the balancing, I'm going to show you this. We'll do a touch leverage, and then I'm going to do an exaggeration of the balancing motion. As you see, even though I'm not moving my finger up and down the fingerboard at all, there is a pretty large variation in the pitch. So to practice this, what you're going to want to do after you've touched and leveraged is once you play the note, you're going to feel the counterbalance of the arm either swinging this way or that way. Now it's going to happen at such a microscopic level that if I can see your arm moving, you're probably doing it wrong. So for instance, I take this A. So for me to try to keep that note dead center, I have to constantly feel like I'm swinging and counterbalancing my arm this way. You don't see it move, but that's what I'm feeling. This is why I call it balancing. 
Now, this is just an introduction of this concept, and I need to let you know that even when I work directly with my students on this idea, it often takes several months for it to really start to stick, because getting the proper feeling here is what's important, and that can take quite a bit of time. So the first place you want to do this is in your scales, as I demonstrated before. Just touch, leverage, balance, put a space between every note to start with. Touch, leverage, balance. Touch, leverage, balance. Touch, leverage, balance. And once you get comfortable with that, then you can take the space out of the note and feel the balancing between the fingers. And as you get better with that, you can start to have that happen as you go faster and faster. Once you're comfortable with this, then you want to take that space out. And when it comes to the balancing portion, you want to feel the weight of one finger being passed to the next finger, much like walking. We don't just stomp our feet down, we shift our weight from one side of our body to the next, from one leg to the next leg. Similarly here, if I touch leverage balance, and then I feel the weight shifting to the next finger. It keeps the leveraging and the balancing a constant thing. And as I said before, this keeps my hand very, very flexible and very loose. Now, I know this is a lot of information to digest. And as I said before, even when I work with people directly on this, it often takes them a good long time to truly understand how to do it. But imagine if you could truly incorporate this into your playing. Once someone really understands how to do this, their thumb starts to activate the leveraging automatically, as well as the balancing in the arm also starts to be activated automatically, which means the only thing you really need to worry about is the motion of the fingers to the strings, which, since everything here is so loose, is much easier to keep consistent. The more consistency we build into this motor pattern, the more consistency we will then have in our performances. Another added benefit of learning how to do this is that once you get the knack of it, you can kind of let your left hand go and put most of your focus into your bow arm, which in my experience has always produced the best quality playing. Another added benefit is that removing unnecessary pressure from the fingertips onto the strings means that your fingertips and the nerve endings therein are going to be a lot more sensitive, which does make a huge difference in your accuracy. And maybe now you can kind of see why I call this a pro secret. If you watch any great violinist, you can see that for the most part, it really just looks like their fingers just fall to the fingerboard, but an amazing sound and amazing accuracy comes out. As to why it's still a secret, well, as I might have demonstrated, it's not the easiest thing to explain, especially to explain quickly, and I think most great violinists just do this naturally. However, it can be taught, and you can learn it. I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy, always here to remind you that there is no pleasure in mediocrity. Happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.